Hey guys, welcome back to the third part of this tutorial series. Let's just jump right in. I got nothing really more to say. Here we go. So in this section, we are just pretty much separating the pipes um, in the texture settings so that we can adjust that texture set without adjusting the rest of the eyepiece. And yeah, this is just some basic node group setups to make it more glowy. And that's about it for that one. Then I jumped into Illustrator and I created some crosshairs. Well, I found them on the internet and then I just refined them on Illustrator and exported them as maps or as alpha maps, basically, as you can see there. And now I will proceed to make the crosshair. Okay, so now we're just going to do like some basic rigging here. I'm setting up a skeleton or some bones for the head. So as you can see, I'm adding some shoulder bones just for reference because we're going to weight paint it and then it needs to, the weight needs to be anchored to something, right? Because it's, it's, a, it's a head. So make sure you name it all properly so that you know <laughs> what you're, um, what you have. Okay, now we're gonna weight paint the head. So we'll just use a gradient for the top bone because it's for the head. And then we just hand paint the rest of it. You can also use the smudge tool and there's like a blend tool to blend the colors together, which makes life a bit easier. So you don't have to mess around with like the actual weight of the brush as much. Okay, here we are adding the jumper back and we just pair it to the same um, armature and we start weight painting it like we did with the head. It's pretty much the same process, go between every bone and assign a color to it, like which parts you want to move, which you don't want to move. Pretty straightforward. So don't forget, you always have to do a bit of testing, making sure that everything is moving properly. Here we're just adding the rest of the objects to so that armature. We're just gonna pair the mask and the reticle and like the eyepiece pretty much to the head bone because it's supposed to move with the head. So there's no weight painting involved. You just add the vertex groups and you name them after the bone that it's supposed to be paired with.
as you can see we're encountering a bit of a problem with like how much the um the hood moves and we are going to fix that with shape keys which are like a nice little um a nice little thing without having to like wave paint and rig things a lot more so we add another shape key the hood and then you leave it at value one and the basic is in value one right and then you start sculpting how you want it to be when it's full some basic animating and see how it all looks i think at the end of it i ended up getting rid of the hood back and i just kept adjusting the first shape key and yeah so here we're adding a vdb i've downloaded it from a website that i'll link below and here you have it so you start positioning it and seeing how you want it to look then you change the temperature to flames and you add the intensity the black body temperature to make it pop a bit more So here I'm using a plane for the front explosions so that I'm not constantly working with VDBs. Okay, for the lighting setup, we are using some alpha maps to kind of like for the light dispersion and make it a bit more nicer and smoother. And we're also using light groups to brighten up certain parts like the mask to make it look better. Now we proceed to do the eyelashes. So we just pretty much separate a mesh and then start way painting on where the eyelash is supposed to go. So I'm pretty sure my tablet kind of wasn't working there. So I was using the mouse to just way paint it pretty easily. There you have it. You add an empty hair and then you go into the curves that was added under the object and you start adding hairs.
So once you're done with the hair, make sure you go into your render settings and set your curves to strip. And as you can see, they are a lot thicker this way. But then we can use the set hair curve modifier to give it the shape that we want, basically. And it makes it look a bit more thicker, a bit more natural, rather than just like lines. Now we're adding just some material to the hairs and we'll see how it looks. And make sure you hide the original copied mesh. As you can see, it looks like a black eyeliner but you can just get rid of it and keep the hair curves there and it will work just fine. So there you have it guys. So this is pretty much like a quick overview of how I did my entire project. I hope you had some helpful tips. Make sure to like and subscribe. It helps a lot if you enjoyed it. Um, the next video in the series, I will show you how I use DaVinci Resolve to really like make it pop and bring the whole thing to life. So you render out the final render and then take it all into fusion in davinci resolve so hopefully we'll see you guys there thank you